Hey guys, so it's been a somewhat long day. I've been working on some other projects. Um, this I couldn't quite get this thing to work, uh, but that did lead me to an epiphany. Uh, but I need to build some more hardware to test a the theory that I have. Uh, long story short, I have a bunch of these little flash chips. These are AM29FO16 chips in particular. These are 5 volt two megabyte flash chips commonly used to build, um, well, now they're commonly used to build flash cards for Game Boy Color. Um, I have, I, I, I've been trying to go through all my chips and a good half of them don't work, at least according to this device, uh, but the other half seem to work perfectly fine. And I did start noticing some patterns here. Uh, the ones that work perfectly fine, for example, are the ones on top. You can focus, maybe. I don't know how well you can read that. But anyway, this top one is a FO16B chip, whereas this bottom one is an FO16D chip. Now, the flash ID for all of these chips seems to be pretty consistent. It's just not being recognized as a flashable chip. So I don't know if that's a firmware problem with this thing or what, but to test that theory, I need another cart reader. Now, I have one of these fantastic things, uh, and for those that don't recognize it, that's probably fine because this was never an official variant. Uh, but this is an open source uh, cart flasher. This one in particular is designed by one of my buddies, Mr. HDR, on the Game Boy Discard. Discord, excuse me. Um, and this one in particular was a beta version. Uh, basically, the first version, you know, if we can get this working yada yada etc etc uh, and this thing does work but it's super temperamental uh, this USB-C port only work oh it did work fine uh, it only works in one orientation and even then it only works if you're holding it at a certain angle so it's super temperamental and I want to get a new one and I didn't even bother soldering half the components to it when I built it I was feeling particularly lazy uh, so that leads me to my next thing here. I've been kind of putting off building a new one because um, you, you know, I, I don't blame HDR. I'm the same way, really. Every time I finish a variant of something, I start working on the next variant. And so at this point, there are like 12 different versions. I have this one. Uh, I ordered these PCBs quite a while ago because... I thought this would be particularly cool, but this is a super old, not supported variant as well. Um, and I mean no offense, and nor am I offended by the fact that it's not supported, because even before building this, I know it's going to be a pile of junk. But it should be better than that other one that I have. Uh, the difference being this one has an easier to solder USB-C port, but... I've soldered these USB-C ports before, and easier to solder might necessarily not be uh, not be what I'm looking for. I mean, it might be easier to solder, yes, but it might not actually work any better. Um, but I actually do have all the components for this thing, and I've had them for quite a while now, so I figure, eh, what the hell, let's get it soldered together and see if we can get it going. Um, so. The big thing you need is, of course, a PCB, and I'll throw a link to Mr. HDR's GitHub repo so you can get a newer version. Uh, the new variants come with uh, a micro USB port instead of a USB C port, which is much, much easier to get working. Uh, he is working on an another variant, of course, uh, that has a USB C port that should be a little bit easier to solder. Uh, I don't have any of the USB-C ports on hand. We both just happened to order a bunch of them. Uh, mine should be here any day now at this point. But there's a third variant that works very well. Instead of having a female USB port on it, it has a male USB-A plug. So you just put your card in, stick it in a, in a USB port, and there you go. No cable required. That's the one I recommend if you're making one. Um, it's called like the GB flasher plug or something. But anyway, 
I have all the parts to make this because I ordered them two different times. The first time I ordered, excuse me while I'm fucking with this plastic here. Uh, first time I ordered all the parts, I set them aside someplace special where I wouldn't lose them, and then I lost them. <laughs> and months went by, and I figured I had accidentally thrown them out, so I ordered parts again, and then I finally found the original parts that I ordered. But the problem is, I don't know, well you can see that, this is obviously more parts than I need to build one. Um, but that's just because resistors, these 5.1k ohm resistors in particular, it's like they're fractions of a penny. So you order 10, you order 100, it's still less than a dollar. Uh, but anyway, let's see if I can get this soldered together. Boot up my soldering iron. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to solder on this USB-C port, I hope. Luckily that fits in there perfectly. So this USB-C port has um, surface mount pins and through hole pins to mount it to the PCB. Um, last one of these I soldered, I can only ever get it to work in one orientation, but at least it, you didn't have to hold the cable in a specific Yeah, that should be fine. At least you didn't have to hold the cable in, in like a, you know, at, a, at, at an angle just to get the stupid thing to work. So I am, before I even try, I know I'm going to need some flux. But this USB-C port in particular, the ones that I have here, these are decent. Like I said, they're kind of hard to solder. It's a lot easier to solder on, well, actually, it doesn't, it's not any easier to solder, but like as far as routing the, the traces, the tracks, whatever you want to call them, they're a lot easier to route on a four layer board than they are on a two layer board. And of course, this is a two layer board because four layer boards are much more expensive. So it defeats the whole purpose. Um, the reason that is a concern is because there are a lot of little connections that need to be made, and without all of those connections, this port won't work properly. Specifically, I'm talking about um, the CC lines, which are, if you were to plug this thing into a USB-C host, the CC lines tell it, tell the USB-C host that this device needs 5 volts. Without those routed, this won't work at all. You'll need like a USB-A to USB-C adapter. Anyway, that wasn't too difficult. I think we're going to be okay. I just got solder all over the port. Oh, and I'm making it worse. Okay. There is no making that better. Okay. Well, hopefully I didn't ruin everything. There is a short, though. Okay, I think that was the hard part. Next, before I solder this, I need to get my other surface mount chip. So, this was my brilliant idea. Um, let me get all this background stuff out of the way, hopefully. Instead of ordering the actual chips we need, Let's just order clones on AliExpress, and it just so happens that the USB serial adapters are cheaper if you order a whole stupid USB adapter board. We just need this chip. We don't need the whole board. Um, I had considered taking the schematic for this thing and uh, 
you know, adapting it to work with this, so you just solder this on, but that's a mini USB. That is so janky. We don't want mini USB. Okay. Hopefully, I don't ruin everything. Just using my heat gun here, some hot air. I don't really care about ruining this thing. There are some other good parts on it that I might use for something in the future, but in the meantime, all I care about is this chip. Sorry, I forgot to give a loud noises warning for all three of you headphone users. Oh, Christ. I don't see any markings for orientation. I assume that's pin one. Oh, dear. For either of these chips. On, uh, on this variant, there was a longer, a single pin that was longer. but I don't see that on any of these. I'd have to go find the schematic for this thing. I'm fairly confident that the orientation of the text, uh, no, that's not a good bet. I'm gonna be right back. I'm gonna go see if I can't find the schematic for this thing. So oh, it's there in the board preview. I don't know why the hell it never made it onto the board itself. Uh, but if you see that little pink line, that's the silk screen. It never made it onto the silk screen of this thing. Right there and right there. Don't know what happened, but uh, I went ahead and marked it off myself. So. Uh, with wonderful silver sharpie that, as it turns out, ooh, focus, there we go, can't see worth a damn. So, I gotta put the little dot in the corner, that little dot, line it up with that line there, and then same thing with this AT Mega, if I can even grab it. Just like that. To solder these, I'm going to take those off. Wake my soldering iron back up because it went to sleep. I'm just going to use flux. I know I'm going to need it. Might as well get it on there now. After I get these soldered, I'm going to go ahead and get started on the surface mount parts. Like all the LEDs, resistors, caps, and shit. And then I'm going to make sure I can flash this thing. And then once it's flashed, then I'll move on to the uh, cart bus adapter cart reader, actual interface with the physical cartridge itself. I'm just lining these up best as best I can.
go. Now let me do this one before I fuck it up. So there's some shorts I'll have to get rid of. Well, not even focused, I'm sorry. But I'll get it in a second. I just want to make sure I get all the pins soldered down first. Ooh, flux dissolves Sharpie, good to know. take it in this last little bit. There we go. Ghetto zoom in. Goodness. I'm running out of wick here. Excellent. Okay. Got all six sides nicely soldered, no shorts. Still plenty of flux hanging around, but I'll, I'll clean that up in a bit. Alright. So, I have baggy of let me lift that up a little bit what are these 10 uf 0603 caps i need it looks like one of them on part number c3 oh good it's a bag within a bag because that's not wasteful
I hope these uh, part numbers are right. I never kept the old bill of materials for this model. I'm just assuming they haven't changed on the newer ones. Christ. There we go. What did I say that was? C3? Yeah. Next, I have 0603 10K Ohm. I don't even think this is for this. Oh, just kidding, yeah it is. Looks like it's going to be R5. These, six, seven, I think I ordered these for my cart reader. At least ordered extra. My cart reader being this thing. Alright, what part did I say that was? R5. R5 is right there. There's already solder on one. I think I messed that up. There we go. Next, I have Crystal 6 megahertz. I know where that goes. This goes right there. Well, that's going to be easy to solder too. It's one side. the other side. Next, I have, I think, an LED. Yep, I'll leave these for last. It's also an LED. Also LEDs. Okay. This is 1K ohm 0603. I need four of these for R1, 2, 3, and 4.
Oh, these are the uh, LED. Oh, that's awful. LED resistors. It would probably make more sense to do C4, the capacitor, blue, first, but meh. Now, I'm flipping these ones over so they're not upside down. There's no electrical reason for that. Just aesthetic. Okay. It's one side. Okay, okay. Next, I have twenty-two PF capacitors. Picofrad. Need two of these for C five and C six. C6 down here. So one of those is horrendously crooked, but it's okay. Next. I have PTC resettable fuse. I don't know where that goes. Once again, a bag within a bag. I suppose if you are really confident in your assembly and usage, you can just short those pads and omit the fuse entirely. But fuses are safety devices. Never bypass a safety device unless you absolutely have to. Because the purpose of safety devices, in this case, is to prevent this thing from blowing out your USB port on your computer. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather be out a uh, shitty little reader, no offense, 
you know, ten dollars worth of parts, as opposed to blowing out the motherboard on my eight hundred dollar laptop. Just you know, not that. Oops. Not that my $800 laptop is still worth $800, but you know. And even then, that's a resettable fuse, so as soon as you remove power, it should reset. Now I have 0.1 UF capacitors. I need three of these. I think I might need to take a break here pretty soon. That was C1, C2, and C4. Uh, sorry, I got interrupted. My uh, camera decided it was time for a break, which I guess it was. I kind of needed one too. Um, I did clean up a little. So, a little bit of isopropyl alcohol. And that took care of that. Uh, I am using my other soldering iron now. I'm going to switch back to the first one when I get to the cart reader. Hopefully. Uh, I decided to turn that one off for now. Just give it a little bit of a break. It was running pretty warm. And it was starting to get unpleasant to hold. So I'm thinking that's probably a bad sign. But we're in the final stretch now. It's going to be okay. This one's easier to do the small surface mount components with anyway. I just got to get used to it. That's going to be crooked. Oh well. While I was waiting on the camera to cool down, I did do a little bit of work on this thing. Um, spoiler alert, it does work. At least I think it does. Everything I've hooked up so far seems to work. I did already flash the firmware on it, so this thing should be good to go once I get the cart reader soldered on. And to flash this thing, you use these uh, this six pin header slot. Um, HDR uses a little hat for his Raspberry Pi to flash it. I use uh, what's called a USB ASP, I think it is, which is USB ASP. Uh, looks like this right here. It looks It's basically just a flash drive that you plug in and decide. I don't ever bother soldering the header pins down. I usually just stick it in there and hold that at an angle so that all pins are making contact. And that seems to work. You only have to hold it like that for a few seconds anyway, so... Not a big deal, but this thing was like $2 on AliExpress, if that. Highly recommend it if you need to flash something like this. But, it's time for our last component, which is my 5.1K resistors. Now, the uh, normal, oops, the normal cart reader does not use these components, and such you won't find these in the bill of materials. This is the, um, these are the resistors for the CC lines on the USB-C port. So any cart reader that does not have a USB-C port will not have R6 and R7 and you will not have to solder 5.1K resistors. Um, 
this is one of the things that I tinkered with when I got the schematic from HDR because of course I just have to tinker with everything I, I, I can't leave anything good enough alone well enough alone whatever you know what I'm trying to say HDR oh what I put that away I still need it HDR when he designed this particular cart reader did it the smart way and he actually stuck within the specs such that um, the CC lines couldn't be routed. You have to break the design rules just to route them. And sometimes that's okay, but not always, as in breaking the design rules. Um, I figured I could get away with it. That's why I didn't mind tweaking it a little. But my PCBs, uh, because I did break the design rules, they very well could have come defective and not worked at all. In fact, they still might just not work. Oh, damn it. Of course, I said this soldering iron is easier to do the surface mount stuff with, and I'm having such a hard time. I'm just used to the other one, I swear. I think the temperature on this one's a bit too high. There we go. Don't read that. Okay, next, last but not least, we have LEDs. So this particular design uses three different color LEDs. I don't know what's what until I get them plugged in. Thankfully, I ordered the same part number that HDR lists in his bill of materials, so I should be able to figure it out. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter which color is which. Um, these are all LSM 0603. Okay, so the last four digits are different. Or I guess the three of the last four digits are different. So 453 is green. That's this one. I need one of these. 463 is blue. I need two of these. 412 is red. I need one of these. Interesting. Sorry, that's not interesting at all. <laughs> uh, what I mean by that, when I say it's interesting, is that they're, they were in the same order in my hand that they were listed in the bill of materials. So, 10% is not blue. So this is a humidity indicator because I ordered these from Aero.com, Aero Electrics, Electronics, and um, apparently these are moisture sensitive components. I don't really care about that. I probably should, but I don't. Alright, so green is LED1. That's what this is. Let's see if I can get this right. I'm pretty sure the little green bar is the ground, or the cathode, whatever the hell you want to call it. Which is represented by the line on the schematic, or the, on the circuit board. So, Boom. And these are heat sensitive components, so try not to linger. 
This is for 63. Yep. Two of these. And you can order these significantly cheaper on AliExpress than from Arrow. Arrow used to be my go-to, my recommended supplier, but unless you're spending more than 50 bucks, don't even bother. They're entirely too pricey these days. Mmm. Shit. Oh, okay. Just kidding. We're good. Oh, I just threw that somewhere. Budge. Good thing I bought extra. So this LED, for whatever the hell reason, I don't think the markings are on the top. Or maybe it is. It would be super convenient if it is. Because that's what I'm going by. Can I find that LED? Is that going to happen? No, I don't think that's going to happen. Okay, let me get one more. tomorrow. Okay, I'm going to try not to throw it again. It's acting like there's no flux. There we go. And last but not least. So, if you were to solder down, or at least try soldering down parts that have absorbed water, where the fuck, oh, there it is, um, usually you would solder these in an oven or something, what would happen is the water will boil and vaporize, and it'll pop out, and it'll start moving components around as it pops out which, as you can imagine, is probably not very good. Cool. I just hit the camera. Whoops. Okay, let's, uh, let's try it out now that everything's soldered. Still got this thing plugged in. Of course, I held it at the wrong angle and it unplugged. 
Yeah, I got the LEDs right. <laughs> that was a uh, genuine concern there. And the software does recognize it, and when I click the button, the uh, lights flash. So that's pretty cool. Let's get the cart reader soldered on. So I have here it is. ordered a bunch of these because fuck it, why not? Again, this is an older variant of the uh, cart reader, so there are some. Um, I forget the word I'm thinking of. Or I can't. Yeah. You have to cut these little nubs off. Newer versions of this cart reader, you do not have to do this. But this was before we had a. Or HDR made a perfectly working footprint. So now we just need to solder that down. I guess this board's sticky from flux, but uh, we need more flux. Bigger the gab, better the job, or something like that. On the newer versions of this reader that have the proper footprint, oh shit, ah, we'll use this on iron. It's the worst that could possibly happen. Yeah, it's lined up. Okay. The um, newer versions have the actual locating pins in there, so you don't have to cut that off. Okay. Oh, I'm doing this way wrong. Darn camera cut me off. Um, I was saying, if you don't want to build one of these, um, HDR on the Game Boy Get, GitHub or Discord, excuse me, came and speak, does actually sell these. Um, I don't think he has a store set up yet, but talk to him. I'm sure you can work something out. Um, personally, I recommend building your own because they're cool, but you're not into soldering this sort of thing together, then uh, definitely talk to HDR. Probably hook you up. In the final stretch, boys and girls.
Probably should turn the heat way up on my iron for that. Because that is a big ass joint. Okay. alcohol on a cotton swab here. I'm going to clean up as much of this flux as I can because it's really sticky. I hate getting it all over my hands. I think what I might do, get a toothbrush, get some isopropyl alcohol, scrub this thing down. But otherwise, I think we're good to go. Let me get... a cart. Plug it in. And instead of screen capture, let's do this the uh, wonderfully ghetto way. And uh, the card info, it's not reading it. Fudge. I just want to make a quick addendum. I figured it would be something like this. Uh, I got it plugged in. It's finally reading Harry Potter Chamber of Secrets. That's what's plugged in. And uh, let me let me set that down there. Zoom on out so I can take control of the mouse. And we'll just hit card info. See it refreshes just fine. I'm gonna unplug that. Maybe. Yeah, there we go. Plug this in. And uh, card info here, and it recognizes it as Pokemon Crystal, which is probably what's plugged in. So I'm happy with that. Uh, it does work. The problem was, let me uh, let me show you here. There was a short on two pins right here on the bottom that I didn't even see. Apparently. It wasn't bad enough that I couldn't flash the firmware. I even ended up trying to reflash the firmware, but it wasn't that. I had to solder that stupid thing in because with the cart reader, I couldn't do my angled thing. Uh, but, oh, wonderful blurry. But hey, it works now. Just uh, works great. Just make sure you don't have any shorts. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.